Welcome back to Exchange Street Capital. I am Rick Allenbach, and uh, today we're going to talk about separately managed accounts versus do it yourself. Uh, two weeks ago, I had an influx of people wanting to understand passive versus active investing in terms of mutual funds, and um, I was rewarded. Uh, we're going to, at some point today or tomorrow, we'll hit over 100,000 views in one week, so thank you. Consequently, everyone's come back with, hey, talk to me about SMAs, good, bad, and different, or should I just be investing myself? So uh, we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're I'm not going to tell you whether you should do it yourself or um, use an advisor. Uh, I'm going to give you tools to, to try to decipher that, um, at least today. Uh, we're going to break down some things uh, in later clips on the way I do it and the way I think after seeing kind of the whole universe of investing uh, based on probably a conversation uh, what you should do. Uh, in fact I had four conversations with young people this week probably under 25 very very responsible folks uh, who either had homes were buying a home had discretionary uh, savings to start investing in the market. Um, really, really good discussions, and all four of those went very differently, but uh, I was happy to provide value, and it reiterated why I think this is uh, important. So let's get started. So a separately managed account, or an SMA, um, is used by almost every advisor I know, especially on the retail level, um, for taxable money for, for monies that aren't in a 401k or a rollover IRA or is not qualified, not deferred from tax or in a Roth where it just, you know, grows uh, and accumulates free from tax. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, the, you know, the SMAs have some pros. We're going to talk about those and why they're used. We're talking about the cons. Then we're talking about sort of how to do it yourself and from that, hopefully, you, you gain uh, some information. So what are some pros of SMAs? Well, unlike a mutual fund where your money is pooled together and you get units, uh, you don't actually own shares of any of the stocks or bonds or, or instruments within that mutual fund. Uh, you have direct ownership in securities. Now, there's value to that as we get, go through. Uh, that creates greater tax efficiencies, right? Um, because a uh, mutual fund is, because the money's pooled, the capital gains and the dividends are paid when they decide to pay them. It makes no difference when you got in or out. It has nothing to do with your exact um, tax uh, wants, needs, or, or um, bracket, where the SMA is directly your money, your tax situation uh, alone. So that's, that's important, right? That helps. Uh, professional management. There are tons of SMAs. Some are not good, some are okay, as with everything, some are excellent, right? In terms of uh, research teams trying to, again, beat that market, trying to get the best in breed of stocks and bonds, etc. Um, so you're, you're, you're getting that. Customizable. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have overexposure in one particular stock, let's say from a family or what have you, um, let's say, you know, Goodyear is a, is a stock that members of your family have or you have a ton of through inheritance, and there's no way you want it. There's no way you want that sec sector, so you don't want... You don't want Michelin, you don't want Firestone, you don't want anything. So you could carve that out. Uh, you could carve sectors, areas, particular stocks out of the SMA. Uh, that's, a, that's a bonus for some folks. Also, personal beliefs. Um, if you're against, you know, alcohol or casino stocks, um, which I'm not, by the way, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but that's okay if you are, or you're into 
renewables and you want to go green, as a lot of people are, and I am into that, not only because I think the world needs it, but also because they're darn good investments. Uh, it, will, it will fray from the, the typical SMA that the said advisor or the said company would have give you, given you, and you'll be able to customize it. Transparent reporting seems kind of goofy, but your cost basis, your buys and sells, your dividends will be on the statement. Again, kind of goes back to the tax implications. Uh, not a real big deal, but it's, it's transparent in terms of what you own, how much you own, what your basis was. So those are the pros. Here are some cons. And I think it is important before we move forward. Although I had 75,000 views in five days, I am friends with a ton of advisors. I would say it's about an 80-20 split. 80% of the advisors loved what I had to say. 20 of them, 20% of them said, oh man, you're a little hard on us. That's, my, that's not my intention. My intention is not to get you away from advisors. It's to ed educate you. Um, I think they were kind of kidding anyway, but nevertheless, it's to get information. So there are cons to SMAs. I've never owned one. I would never own one. I'm unique in terms of my circumstances, but just for you to know, full disclosure, I wouldn't. Uh, but they're used all the time. There is an advisor that I talk to, because I let them pitch me sometimes, and uh, I say, well, okay, you know, X amount of money, taxable, what would you do? Well, we'd put you in one of our customized SMAs. Okay, thank you very much. So I just want to know there's nothing wrong with them. Obviously, they're prolific. They're used. So cons. High account minimums. This is uh, subjective. A, a mutual fund typically has a $2,500 minimum waived if you're in a, a wrap account, waived if you're in a 401k. Um, some of them have zero. So I'm 250. Uh, typically, these start at 50,000 to 100,000 dollars in account minimums. Um, we're going to talk to when you get into multi styles, they get higher. So it's somewhat high. I mean, you want to be you want to be dealing in the six figure minimum for SMAs, or at least if you're like at 50,000, you want to be building on that. Anyway, however, it's a high minimum, right? Uh, limited strategies available. Unlike mutual funds, unlike doing it yourself, uh, the strategy is going to be, you know, is it value, is it growth, is it blend, is it 50-50 bonds and stocks, okay. And then they're going to have a, a group of, of investments that they can choose from, when I say they, the researchers in a bank, in a wirehouse, and we talked about what they are, the JP Morgans of the world in a investment company, in an independent RIA that gets research from Argus or some other uh, major company that, that provides independent research. So there's going to be weapons in their, in, their tool, in their toolbox and they're going to pick from them. But it's limited. Unlike ETFs, which are index, you know, exchange traded funds, or doing it yourself where the sky's the limit. Um, Multi-style SMAs are going to be more expensive and also have higher minimums. Some of them have as high as $300,000 minimum for an SMA. Okay, you just have to think. Um, expensive, dot, 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 maybe. My entire mission is based on paying for given value. We know that if you followed me, if you're watching me, you know that. If it is giving you what you want, if it is beating the market, if it is providing value, if the relationship with said advisor is providing you ancillary values in other ways, it's not expensive. However, if the typical, and I've done a lot of research on this, the, tip, the average, and there are some that are absolutely ridiculous, but the average cost of an SMA, if we strip everything out, is about 80 basis points. Now that's not, the, the advisor hasn't been paid yet. Under a million, the average is 1.25. So you're talking about 205 basis points um, just, to, just to own it. Just to have somebody else uh, picking stocks for you um, 
to try to beat the market. Okay, so that, that's what that is. There's also markups. And nothing's bought on a limit. Limit order. It's all market orders. That never, ever, ever, ever buy a stock on a market order. Your limit will get go. Good to cancel. Put what you want it. Now, don't put some ridiculous thing. If it's a ten dollar and fifty cent stock, don't say six bucks. You'll never get it. It'll never go until you know the stock's at six, and who knows when that could be. The spread is how specialists and 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 brokers make their money. So they can buy at wholesale and sell you retail. So there's markups um, along with the advisor fees along with the cost of the SMA. It's expensive, right? Not often concentrated enough. We didn't talk about this last week with mutual funds. Passive, you know, so the, the S&P 500 has 500 stocks in it. It has to. The only ones that don't are like principles S&P 500 has 499. They can't manage their own company. It, and, 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 and that's a good thing. You know, you, you're not, you, you can't, you can't, you know, there there would be a lack of transparency there, even though it's part of the index. So, but a given index is the index. A fund, a, a, an active fund, should not be 400 stocks if you're trying to beat the S&P 500. It could be 30, it could be 100, it could be 80. Now, the more assets under management it acquires, the bigger the fund has to get. American funds, it, the big knock on American funds is that they're massive. So, American funds, growth fund of America, been a great Large cap growth fund forever. Well, it, it's essentially the index almost. It's just too big. So I like no load funds that don't have a ton of assets under management. They can be concentrated like a Yachtman, like a uh, uh, Oakmark Select. Uh, I loved Contra before they close. The good ones close when they get too big. Uh, but they're not concentrated enough. They could have hundreds of stocks in them. Too many. It's too many. So there's a couple really good ones that have 30 to 40. I love that range. Okay, so that's another knock. Um, snob appeal. I, I'm at parties all the time, and I talk to people. Oh, you know, uh, believe me, I don't ask. But they talk. They they want. They're so proud to tell me. Well, I have a concentrated uh, SMA from J.P. Morgan. Oh, really? That's awesome. I didn't ask, but I'm very proud of you. Um, and then I, I just we talk about something different. There's nothing wrong with a, a SMA from J.P. Morgan, by the way. But if you, if one of the reasons you have that is because you want to tell people about it, it's the wrong reason. If it's killing everything, great. Why, you know, how's bragging camp? Why do you have to talk about it? So the snob appeal, which is no reason to have an SMA, it's no reason to have anything. Think they have a customized portfolio? You don't. Unless you even, you know, th that, that same SMA, everybody that qualifies is thrown into that same pool of money. And you add adv your advisor may have a thousand clients, they're all in that SMA. So, you know, the only, way it's cust the only way it's customizable if you've got that massive exposure or you went green and you it changed a little. In fact, if you have a customized SMA based on heavy exposure into one stock, heavy exposure into a um, sector that you want to stay away from. You want to go green, you want, you have an aversion to alcohol, tobacco, firearms, big oil, etc. There's a thousand people that have the very same SMA. 999 are going to be looked at as one and going to be tracked and managed. Yours is going to be the exception. My argument is you'd get less attention. You'd think the opposite, but it's true. So the snob appeal really does not benefit you at all for all the reasons we've talked about. So we talk about do-it-yourself. A lot of videos I've seen, a lot of people I talk about institutional management, SMA, as they, as they will call it, um, or mutual funds. I get that argument and debate. We've already passed that. In terms of do-it-yourself, Okay, there's no professional management. Obviously, you're not going with J.P. Morgan. You're not going with any of the 
the thousands of SMAs out there managed by an advisor because that's how they're sold. So you're, do, you're doing it on your own. You're using the tools that are now available and have been available that we've talked about. Now we haven't gone into great depth and in one, one particular show coming up in the next five to six weeks, we're going to talk about those tools and they are wonderful. If you are into that type of thing, if you're willing to learn just a little bit, uh, you really, really can do amazing things. Uh, using those tools, you can be, you know, is, 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 is how, how, how you start to build your portfolio. Can, it can be nimble, concentrated, various strategies. Obviously, uh, you know, my typical strategy, I'm going to tell you right now, is I have, you know, blue chips, you know, make a ton of money uh, per share, uh, PEs are super low, pay a dividend, been around forever, will be around forever, you know, number one in their category in terms of moats, that, 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 that's a layer. Second layer would be growth layer, right? So that could be international, national, whatever, uh, in terms of great companies, beat earnings, making money, don't pay dividends on the growth, on the acquisition trail. Um, in that, in that, I would say, you know, not the mature level yet, um, but getting there. And then third, I have frontier stocks, stocks that are on the come. Stocks, stocks like um, Redfin is, is one example. Uh, think, you know, dif disruptors. Not all of them are going to make. Some of them we're going to miss but you don't put a ton of money in those, but you have those deciphering things, and then ETFs around it. That's how I do it, okay? Uh, if I want sector play, but I don't like a particular, I'm not sure which is the, is the best in that particular sector. I use sector ETFs a lot. So that's, well, that's why I say we can be nimble, concentrated, various strategies. Uh, find what matters to you, what brands you like. Do you, you know, are you, do you love Nike? Do you, do you love, um, uh, you know, Frito-Lay, which is owned by Pepsi-Cola? Do you love, is your, are you a Disney family? You go to Disney all the time. Do you love Disney movies? These are, it's important because they strike with you for a reason. You're spending your hard-earned money on them anyway. You should own the companies, um, you know, especially after you've done your research. Uh, uh, brands you use, what matters to you in terms of, again, are, you know, are you for certain things, are you against certain things? Things that you look for in terms of the technical analysis, because these would be more of qu qualitative analysis. In terms of quantitative analysis, you know, dividend yield, do, do they pay a dividend? So, 12% plus is the average annual rate of return of the stock market since 1900. Uh, half of that is in dividends. A lot of people don't realize that. Dividends are such a weapon, especially when they're reinvested. Reinvested into the stock to buy more and, and you continue, continue, continue. Um, so dividend yield is a huge one for me. Earnings per share, okay? So, you know, we want that high. We want that number high. Uh, P-E ratio is the price of the stock divided by the earnings. Um, we want that number low. We want that low. So that the, the lower that number, the cheaper the stock is. The more expensive it is, uh, I mean, the, the higher it is, the more expensive it is. So you could have Lockheed Martin might be $350 a share um, and might have a PE of 10. I'm making that up right now. I'm not sure what it, what it trades at today. I own the stock. I just I don't look at it every day. Um, Warren Buffett's favorite, return on equity, uh, is another great one. That's, that's kind of a second sheeter. Those are my favorite kind, the second sheeters. Uh, statistics that are not on the first sheet. The second sheeters, that's where the good stuff is. That's where the real stuff is where you see with the stock. You can almost predict what it's going to do. Um, and then just et cetera, other things. Don't, these are not the only things I follow. These are four examples. You could have 100, don't. Uh, but in Morningstar, in TD Ameritrade, in, T, in Fidelity, in, in Vanguard, there are... There are screeners that help you get down to what stocks fall into those categories and what don't. Uh, really, really awesome stuff. Um, ETFs. I talked about it a minute ago that I use them. Okay, they're a great way to round out the portfolio 
uh, I, you know, before we said we don't want 400 positions, but an ETF in a certain sector, like uh, right now, and I'm probably late, but uh, video games and, and, and eSports are huge. So I don't know who's going to win that battle, but there's, a, there's an ETF for it. So that's the way I would play that if I was going to play that. Um, batteries. I think batteries, so uh, the lithium ion battery ETF is one I would play. I mean, after I did m my research, I do not own it. I don't own either of those ETFs. But you can see what I'm saying. You don't have to be guess right on stock A. Um, but it's a great way to round out your portfolio. So this is going to be really hard to read because I made a bet with myself that I couldn't use the smallest amount of the board and cram it all in so nobody could see it, and I won. Uh, it's a bad joke, but I'm not sure why I did this. What I did was I numbered 11 sectors, and these are not sectors that are the only sectors in a given index or a, a, a given part of the market or the market or even the sectors that SMAs use. They were simply the first 11 that came to my mind two minutes before this video so I can make a point of stocks that I personally own or Exchange Street Capital owns and show uh, some, some plays based on brands I like, brands I use, companies that pay good dividends, that make a lot of money, or companies that I think you know, will have a good return on investment. So if we look at consumer staples, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble. I drink Coke every day. I use Procter & Gamble products every day. That's not just because I use it, but uh, I, I think they're best in breed. Energy, uh, Schlumberger, ConocoPhillips, Man, talk about a group that, that's gotten killed, but they're, they are best in breed. Finance, you know, you just, there's a whole bunch of them here. But for me, Bank of America and I have sort of a love-hate relationship, but you got to own them. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, the B class, because it's the tracking stock for the A. The A class is like 200 and some odd thousand dollars a share. So it's the same thing at the, at the retail level. A lot of cash that Warren's sitting on, and I'll bet with him any day. Healthcare, Amgen, uh, one of my largest holdings, second largest, I believe. Uh, I think it's one of the best stocks on the planet, not just in healthcare. And then Johnson and Johnson, industrial, uh, Lockheed Martin. Uh, not just because they're a defense contractor, but everything else they're doing, companies they've been purchasing. And then Cintas, yes, the Cintas that makes toilet cakes and uniforms. They do it real well. They're best in breed. They have a good. Uh, I like the way they go to market, uh, pay a dividend, they split all the time, and then seem to continue to, to, to rise off the split. So, good company. Uh, if you're looking at retail, MasterCard, not only for the blockchain play, but they're one, you know, them and Visa, best in breed in terms of electronic merchants, and um, just fantastic company. Amazon, for obvious reasons. Um, materials. Lindy, gas separation, again, that moat, they just do it better than everyone. Uh, really, really nice company. Sherwin Williams, everybody wants to say Sherman Williams, but it's Sherwin Williams, the paint company. Uh, I mean, obviously they do other things as well, but mainly paint. Media, uh, Disney, uh, Netflix, eight real estate, I didn't write it, write it down, but it would be public storage and AMT. AMT is a, kind of a dual win. It's, Obviously, they have the wireless towers, uh, and so they have a dividend play because they own the land, and then they wireless towers, so it's going to be a big 5G play. Um, utilities, Duke Energy, and New Era Energy. New Era is a, uh, is a, is a play on alternatives and um, reusables, and the S&P 500 is getting huge on that, and they've, they've done really, really well. Uh, technology, JD.com, if you don't know that company yet, check them out. Second largest e e online uh, e-commerce company in China uh, to Alibaba. I own Alibaba as well, but I like JD.com better. And then Apple is my largest holding. So, again, not to say these would beat any SMA. There's no, not to say, oh, these are the companies that you should buy. I'm not saying that. I just wanted to show you how in a given vacuum in theory these could be 11 sectors where you could have a real diversified portfolio after you do the due diligence on them and uh, and now you're you're doing it yourself
this is if you enjoy it, if you are willing to learn, if you're comfortable with the tools, you can do this. If not, this is the way to go. It doesn't matter to me which way you go. It's important to me for everyone out there to understand because I do not think the general public understands enough about what has to what goes into managing your money. Okay? Again, we want to make more than the index when the market's good, and we want to lose less than the index when the market's bad. If we do that, however we do that, it's a good thing. Um, just remember, Wall Street's a funny place. It's the only street in the world where people in limousines call people that take the subway to work about what to do with their millions. So just be careful and make sound decisions and hopefully watching my videos will help a little bit. As always, if I said anything that intrigues you, that you believe in, that you appreciate, please like and subscribe. Uh, if not, you know, feel free to comment. Comment with something good also. I've gotten some great feedback on LinkedIn, on my YouTube channel, just from people talking to me. And um, I appreciate it as always, and, and we'll see you next time.